Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. In this video, I'm going to show you a substitution for the pivot tables. I'm a big fan for pivot tables. Don't stop using them. However, you have an option to stop using them, especially on the small amount of work or something that you are doing in a hurry or very quickly. This will be very helpful. The two functions that we're going to present today is the group by and pivot by. These two functions are still in the beta version. So the majority of the 65 users today don't have access to these two functions. Today is the 1st of June 2024. However, if you activate the beta version, you are going to use it normally. So at the beginning of this video, I'm going to show you how you can activate the beta version in order to get use of any new feature, especially these two functions. Without any further to do, let's go directly to my laptop. If you want to activate the beta channel, you have to go to the file and from file go down to account. Once you select the account, you need to focus on the Microsoft Office Insider or Microsoft 365 Insider. Select Microsoft Office Insider and then change channel. Couple of things you need to do. First one is to sign up for early access and then choose the beta channel. In order to do so, you need to check this box and then from the drop down, make sure that you select the beta channel and then agree on terms and conditions. And finally, you need to click OK. Once you do so, you need to update your office version. So you have to go here and check for updates and install the updates. Once you install the new updates, you are ready to use the beta channel. So you will get the early access for any features released. And also in our case, because we are recording this video 1st of June 2024. So we are going to have an access for the two new functions that we are going to discuss today, which is basically group by and pivot by. In the example today, on the left hand side, we have a table containing some sales data or sales transactions. We have a column for the date and a column for the year. If you check the year, we have only data for two years, 19 and 20. Also, we have categories for the sales. We have four categories, accessories, bikes, clothing, and components. We have the quantity sold and the value of the sales for each and every transaction. The requirement is to prepare a summary for these sales by the year and also by the category. What we want to summarize or what we want to aggregate, we need to aggregate the quantity and the sales. Usually we do the same using a pivot table, but today we are going to start using the group by instead of the pivot tables. Immediately I'm going to start here. I'm going to type equal and then group by. Here is my new function group by and let's follow the screen tip in order to prepare our report. The first requirement is the row fields. What is the row fields? When you prepare a pivot table, when you drop anything inside the row section inside a pivot table, normally you generate a unique list of items. So where is the items that we want to generate a unique list for? As we mentioned, we need to do so for two columns, year and category. Let's start by the first column and then we are going to develop our work as we go. So in order to give the row fields, I need to select the column of the category. So I'm going to select just below the header and then shift and control one arrow down and control backspace. If you look here, you will find that we already selected the correct range, which is basically the categories and then comma. The next requirement is the values. Where is the values that we want to summarize or that we want to aggregate? As I mentioned, we need to do so for quantity and sales, but let's start by the quantity at the beginning. So I'm going to select the first row below the quantity header, control and shift and one arrow down and then control backspace. You will find that we correctly and perfectly selected the column of the quantity and then comma. The next requirement is the function. What is the aggregate function that you need to use? So you have a plenty of aggregations that you can do using the pivot table and also using the group by function. So we have the sum, we have the average, median, count, count A, max and min, and plenty of options. So in our case, we are going to select the sum and then close the bracket and hit enter. And here you go. You have a unique list of all the categories, the four categories and the aggregation or the summation of each and every category according to the table that we provided. And also you have a total spell down with a total of 295. I think this is perfect so far. 
So let's try to develop this a bit by bit. At the beginning, we need to expand our summary to include also the year. So I need 2019 with the four categories and then 2020 with the four same categories. Let's try to edit. I'm going to double click and I'm going to select the row field. And instead of just selecting or highlighting the category, I'm going to expand this to the year as well and then hit enter. And here you go. I have the unique list expanded to include also the year, not only the category, and I have the summary working perfectly and I have the grand total. Let's try also to add the quantity and the sales instead of the quantity only. Let me double click on the top corner cell as well. And then I'm going to expand my selection to include the sales and hit enter. And I think it is working perfectly. Now I need a couple of things in order to be a little bit similar to the pivot table. I need the headers. You can see that if I do the report like this, I will never know what is this column and what is this column. And also uh, the year could be anything else. It can be an ID or so. And also I'm not sure if this is a category or product name or what else. So I need to add the headers. In order to do so, I can do it inside the same function. No problem. Let me double click once more in order to edit. And after the function, I'm going to add comma. And here we start the optional arguments. The first one is the field headers. It is asking you about the headers. If no headers, you are going to select zero and this is the default. If you, if you have headers, but you don't need to show, will be number one, the selection number one. You can see here, yes, but don't show. Or you don't have, but you need to generate, automatically generate. If I select the option number two, let me select and then hit enter. Here you go. It will generate an automatic header. It is not bad, but not very useful. So you'll find row field one, row field two, value one, value two, and so on and so forth. So it is not too bad, but it's not very helpful. So I'm going to edit once more. And instead of two, I need to add something else in this case. This will be the option number three, which is yes and show. So I have headers and please, I want you to show these headers. So I'm going to select three and before just hitting enter, I need to expand my selection to include the headers as well. So I'm going to include also my headers here and then hit enter. And that's fantastic. You have the headers and you have the data and you have the summarization. Everything is working perfectly, very similar to the pivot tables. So there is more options that you can do, especially if you think about the subtotal. So I have, I can have a subtotal here just be between the 2019 and 2020. I can add a subtotal here for the summary of 2019 itself and a summary for 2020 itself. In order to do so, let me edit once more and then I can add another comma. And if you look at the option now, we are talking about total depth. And total depth helps you to identify the grand total and the subtotal. I need to select number two, grand total and subtotal, and then hit enter. And here you go. You have the subtotal for 2019 and also a subtotal for 2020. So it is fantastic. It is very similar to what you usually do using the pivot tables. So far, so good. Let's move forward and see how we can develop this more. To get the maximum benefit of this function, I'm going to convert this data set into an Excel table. So I'm going to select any cell inside this range and I'm going to hit Control and T. My table has headers and OK. From Design Ribbon, let me give a name for this like Sales and hit Enter. Now I need to go to the formula and change the ranges that we selected into a table reference or table ranges. So I'm going to double click once more. Here you have B1 to C148, this is the row fields, including two columns, year and category. In order to change this selection or change this to a table reference, I'm going to select the first header. You will see this black arrow, one click in, er in order to select the entire column, another click on order to add also the headers. And you look at the reference, sales, and then hash all, and then year. This means that you select also the headers. Now I need to include another column. So I'm going to hit shift and or press and hold shift and right arrow. This will select, as you can see here, control backspace. You will see here that it's also including the category. So I have all, hash all, meaning that it includes the header and then the column year and the column category. Let me do the same for the second reference or for the other reference. Now I am ready. I can just hit enter 
and nothing will change but now I'm referencing the table not a range of cells this is exactly meaning that when you add the data for 2021 this will automatically update let's try together I have here the data for 2021 control C and then back to our report I'm going down the first empty cell after the table and control V control home to go up once more and here you go you have 2021 automatically updated even without doing any refresh this is unlike pivot table for pivot table after doing any change in the data source or in the source table you have to go and refresh your pivot table this is not required at all for the worksheet function now suppose that you need to create a pivot table format what I mean by pivot table meaning that you have column headers and row headers if you check here we have only row headers so I have the year and category on the row and then I have the data points on the same row but if I want to create headers for the columns and also headers for the rows so I need to do something like uh, 2019 and here 2020 and I have here the four categories such like this this will be a pivot format if I want to do so and finally the data points will be the intersection between the columns and the rows this is a pivot format if I want to use this pivot format while summarizing the data I need to use the pivot by so let's start by just hiding these cells in order to focus only on the uh, pivot by and let's try together I'm going to type equal and then pivot by and then I'm going to follow the screen tip and it is very similar to what we did with the group by if you have already worked with the group by this will be much easier so I'm going to start by the row fields row fields in this case will be only the categories I'm going to select one click more in order to add the headers and then comma the column fields column fields will be the year column one click another click and then comma the values values can come again from two fields but let me focus on sales for the moment I'm going to select only the sales once more to include the header and then comma I need the function I'm going to continue with the sum no problem and then comma there is also an option for the headers let me select yes and show we already selected the headers and then comma finally the depths you can add the grand total and the subtotal no problem but in this case there is no need for the subtotals because we are working on only one layer so I'm going to add only the grand total close the bracket and hit enter and here you go let's look at the results at the first two rows you have the headers you can see here the sales the name of the field that you use in the values and also you have the columns 2019 20 and 21 here you have the categories the four categories and finally you have a total row and also you have a total column I think this is fantastic you managed to simulate what you usually do using the pivot table in one go using either the pivot by or the group by if you check for sure the final results it will be identical and I think it is very useful that was all for today I hope that was beneficial for you even if you don't have access yet to these two functions it's good to have an idea once it will be available to the rest of the users you will have a good idea and then you can start using them directly thank you very much for your time if you like this video please like it subscribe and leave a comment and share the video and we'll catch you in the next video and bye